One of the coolest aspects of Wild Hearts is its weapons and how unique and crazy over the top they are. And when some of these weapons get a little too much attention, then you end up with insanely fun tools of destruction that are more than capable of breaking the game. If Wild Hearts is not already broken on your PC. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be taking a look at one of the strongest weapons in the game, if not the strongest. This weapon will carry you through the mid game of Wild Hearts all the way until and including the end game content. And because with weapon upgrades you have so much customization available to you, and there are many fantastic skills you want to slap on top of your beautiful weapon, I'll be going over that too, in case you, like myself, are crazy and likes to spend hours, if not days, optimizing their sets. With that being said, my name is Dark Hero and let's get into it. Our weapon of choice is going to be one of Wild Heart's most unique weapons, perhaps the most unique out of all 8 weapons, the Karakuri Staff. I'm choosing this weapon for its damage output, versatility with its 5 different transformations, and damage, just a whole lot of damage, being the weapon that can achieve the single highest damage number in the entire game. So which one are we using? By the way, if you're worried about having to charge the Karakuri staff to unleash the Colossal Sword finisher, I have something to help with that which I'll show you in a moment. So the Karakuri staff we're using is the, pardon my pronunciation, Karakuri staff Nigi Hayahi number 2. While it may not have an element, it more than makes up for it with its insane 760 base attack. It also comes with not one, but two very powerful skills. Slight of Hand Fury temporarily boosts the attack by 10% after conjuring a Karakuri of any kind. And more importantly, Mountain Felling Giant Blade, a very appropriate name as it increases the power of Juggernaut Blade attacks, the Colossal Sword Finisher, by 40%, provided that we use it at maximum mutation level. Being able to boost the incredible damage of our ultimate move on a weapon with already insanely high attack stat means that there's not a lot of monsters that will be able to survive 2 or 3 hits from this move. And I'm talking about endgame kimono here. And while that 10% extra damage after conjuring a Karakuri may not seem like all that much, keep in mind just how often you create these throughout the entire hunt. Springs, for example, are not only great for mobility but also enable combo routes that allow the Karakuri staff to charge its mutation levels very quickly. And being able to increase the damage of all those transforming attacks may be a great boon in your favor. Unfortunately, the skill Fog Fall leaves a lot to be desired as it increases your attack power against Airborne Kemono which I would argue there aren't that many that will stay up in the air for long periods of time, nor is it easy for the Karikuri staff to consistently reach monsters that are up in the air. However, Fogfall cannot be removed from this weapon, nor can it be substituted by any other skill, as it is the default inherited skill of this weapon. Now, there are a few other Karikuri staff that actually have a higher attack stats than this one we're using. The problem with those, however, is that in the case of the Golden Tempest one, it frankly comes with bad skills as none of them really do seem to increase your damage. The Firebird Karakuri Staff Uzusama actually comes pretty close and is a really good weapon at the end of the day. It does come with the skill Mountain Felling Giant Blade, but it only gives you a 15% damage increase opposed to the 40% we get from the weapon we're using. That being said, it does come with Combined Arts Attack, which boosts the power of Triangle Attacks by 20%, which is a pretty significant boost to many of the attacks you'll be using to build up your Mutation Gauge. And it also comes with Strong Arm Spirit, which boosts the chance of landing critical hits for a while after activating Hunter's Arm. Personally, I don't like this skill a whole lot because, more often than not, I only use Hunter's Arm once or twice a hunt at most, and with the Karakuri staff in particular, I often am able to defeat the Kemono before I need to use Hunter's Arm. 
So this is still a good alternative if you want to deal more damage with the rest of your kit, but all in all I would say that it is a worse weapon than the one we're using. The two weapons of the final boss also have 780 base attack, the left one doesn't have amazing skills, having full force blow at 31% which boosts the power of full body attacks, which I don't think is particularly impressive, and it also comes with one stroke critical, which will increase your critical hit chance by 40% after destroying a kimono part, which is not necessarily bad, but I don't think you need critical hits with this weapon at all, especially when you're able to dish out as much damage as we can. The right side of the weapon from the final boss is better, but it ends up being just a downgrade of the Firebird Karakuri Staff, as it also comes with Mountain Felling Giant Blade at a 15% damage increase, but it comes with Stowed Weapon Boost, Ironclad, which reduces your injury while your weapon is stowed by 10%, and it also comes with Hawkeye, which boosts your attack power against Kimono's weaknesses by 10%. In case you don't know, the weaknesses this refers to is whenever kimonos have a part exposed that is glowing in blue and you're able to use your hunter arm on it. That 10% damage boost sure is nice, but in my opinion, sometimes it can be very hard to aim the giant blade at the kimono, so if you're not going to use the weapon that I'm focusing the build on, just go with the firebird, I think that it is much more reliable and it's going to do more damage more often than not. Now if you really want to optimize the weapon, this is where the fun is at. As you can see right here, I have added not one, but two mountain felling giant blades on top of the one we already have, both at a 15% damage increase, which totals to 70% damage increase whenever we perform the colossal blade attack. Which is of course absolutely insane, and it means that whenever we land that hit, it is going to obliterate the kimono and you're probably only going to need to land two of those to finish any hunt in the game. And because I'm a little bit of a maniac with this game, I also added two damage boosting skills on top. Destruct Art makes all parts of a kimono easier to destroy, it doesn't necessarily increase the damage of your attacks, but it is a very nice thing to add on top, and more often than not you're going to be able to destroy a kimono part with the second hit and not the big finisher of the colossal giant blade attack, which means that you're going to leave that part exposed, and whenever you hit the third and final hit of the mountain felling giant blade, that is going to deal massive damage. The other skill I added is Desperation, which will boost your attack by 15% at the cost of your defense. Now this may be a bit tricky, as you can see you need to be in the kimono path of your armor set, so make sure that you have that equipped. I'll talk about my armor set for this build in a moment. But just being able to increase my damage by another 15% is absolutely insane. And of course this is a 15% attack increase on everything, so it's not just the giant blade, it's also going to be on the combos that I'm going to be using leading up to that giant blade. So that way, even if you miss your big finisher move, you aren't overly relying on it. And here's the path that I went through with this weapon. Nothing of note so far, but here the Azuma Karakuri Staff 2 is the one that gave me the Destruction Art. The Firebird Karakuri Staff I mentioned earlier gives me the Mountain Felling Giant Blade. And the Agate Karakuri Staff 2 is the one that gives me Desperation. Of course, if you don't want to have that risk of decreasing your defense by 15%, you can simply choose to go from this one straight into the final boss Karakuri, the Nozuchi no Kami which gives me another 15% damage increase to my Mountain Felling Giant Blade. Once all of this is added up, you end up with damage that can only be rivaled by that of the strongest cannons in the game. Now before we continue and I move over to telling you guys about how you can maximize your transmutation gauge very quickly, let's take a look at the armor set that I choose to use for this build. Starting with the helmet, I have the Garuda head, which you get by hunting the Ember Plume. It comes with Fatigue Recovery, which increases your stamina recovery speed by 10%, Death Ears, which nullifies the effects of Kemono Roars, 
and Solar Protection which boosts your attack and defense in daylight hours by 5%. So if you remind yourself to hunt in the day, you'll always get a 5% extra attack on top of everything, which is just nice. However, the main reason for using this helmet is definitely the deaf ears, as it allows you to keep attacking the kimono relentlessly, even when it roars, which usually gives you time to get one or two extra bars on your transmutation gauge that you would not be able to get otherwise. Unless of course you dodge the roar, but if you do that, you are also taking some time off from doing damage. For my chest piece, I'm using the Garuda Uwagi, again from Ember Plume, which comes with Blaze Resilience, which decreases the chance of being set ablaze by 25%. Honestly, we don't really care about this, and self-control boosts your stamina recovery speed when you only have a single life remaining, which again, we really don't care about this all that much. What we really care about is Desperation, which will reduce your defense but boost your attack by 7%. Now 7% may not sound like much, but I have some other gear pieces that do give me some extra Desperation, which once all of that is added up, will be a massive damage bonus on top of a weapon with an amazingly high base attack. And of course we're using the Kemono Path on the chest piece because we want to be on the pure Kemono Path so we are able to trigger Desperation. For the Gauntlets we're also using the Garuda Gauntlets which again come with Desperation we're now at a 14% damage increase on top of a couple of pretty nice damage bonus with Strong Arm Spirit boosting the chance of landing critical hits for a while whenever Hunter Arm is activated. And Critical Draw will also boost the chance of getting critical hits by 5% for a while after drawing the weapon. There is an argument to be made about using the Wayward Brigand Gauntlets, which will increase your attack by 17% after destroying a Kimono part, which is an insanely high boost to your damage. However, it isn't too reliable as sometimes you don't break a monster part before you get the final hit. But if you trigger this, definitely go for this one instead. Now for the waste, we're using the Dawn Guard Haidate, which you get while hunting Amaterasu. Again, we're on the Kemono path because we want to get to that red part. It comes with Health Boost, which will increase our maximum health. Karakuri Coordination Remedy is a pretty nice quality of life skill that makes it so that you recover some health whenever you perform an attack after using a basic Karakuri. So things like jumping off a spring and immediately attacking the Kemono will recover a small portion of health that can make the difference between getting carted or not. And finally, Slide of Hand Fury will boost your attack after conjuring a Karakuri. It doesn't specifically state a basic Karakuri or a fusion Karakuri, so this 10% damage bonus can actually work in many different scenarios, not only when you use your spring to jump on the kimono and do some damage that you would also heal because of this other skill, but doing things such as using the crossbow right before you unleash the giant blade finisher to stagger the kimono and make sure that you land a big hit, those big hits would be boosted by this 10% damage bonus which would be a really good buff. And finally for the boots, I have the Dawnguard boots, again from Hunting Amaterasu. They come with Tangle Resilience, which we really don't care about. Eagle Eye will boost your attack and defense for a while when deflecting a Kimono with a Fusion Karakuri. Not too important, but it may sometimes trigger. And Sprint Master is just a nice quality of life skill that we are able to use because we are on the pure Kimono path. Now previously I used to use the Cobalt Lava Back Boots because they come with the skill Resurrection, which allows you to take one extra hit before you cart. Essentially the game puts you at one health whenever you're supposed to cart for the first time on a hunt. However since then I have received this talisman that has the skill Resurrection, so I don't need to use my boots for that. That being said, I don't really know what other boots I would use other than these two, so if you guys have any recommendation for a different boots that I should use, let me know in the comment section below. There are also some other armor pieces that come with the skill Rally Fury, which will boost your attack when a single life remains. Now normally I would not recommend this skill, however once you get to the end game and you're hunting the extreme volatile kimono, in those quests you typically only have a single cart, which means that these skills would always be active, so they are good to use in those scenarios. So just keep that in mind once you get to the endgame of Wild Hearts. 
So now let me show you some of the fastest ways that I use to max out my transmutation gauge as fast as possible. So for starters, simply unsheathing the weapon and using square or using triangle is not a good way to get right into your transmutations because those animations take a long time to get there and in the case of using the light attack you need to use two inputs to be able to transmute the weapon. Using the spring is a pretty good way to get there. As you can see it covers quite a bit of distance between you and the monster and depending on where you input the light button you can choose if you're going to get too close or too far to the monster. As you can see this is what happens when I delay the input, it puts me much farther than I was back there. However this is not the ideal way to get into your transmutation gauge because while the first hit may be fast, the second hit and the third hit requires you to use a couple of different inputs. The sprinting into light attack is actually a good option because as you can see the first input is very fast, covers a big area and gets you right into the transmutation. However the sprint into heavy attack does take a little bit of time, but however you have two very fast transmutation inputs, whereas going into sprint light attack will have a very fast first input but then you do need to use three inputs with this weapon to change into your shuriken. However what I found to be the fastest way to build up your transmutation gauge is to go into a slide, use light attack and as you can see you get three very fast transmutations by only pressing a single input. So let's do that again. We slide, light attack, transmutation, transmutation and transmutation. No light attacks required in between. Now from then on as you can see we do need to tap the light attack once again and a second time here to get all of these transmutations and once we get into the spear there is no other way around you either go for the heavy attack which is another input that is very slow or you wait for that animation to finish and then you go into a light attack. But that still takes quite a bit of time. And let's face it, waiting for an animation to end only to, for them to use a neutral animation is a bit clunky. The way I do things is also somewhat clunky but I found it to be the best way to go about it. You do the sliding combo, which I told you guys earlier about, then you sheath your weapon and you do it again. As you can see we're only two levels away from getting max transmutation and that was very fast. And because we're using the Garuda hat as a helmet, which again comes with the skill death years, we will be immune to any kimono roar, which means we'll have some extra amount of time whenever the hunt begins and the kimono first pays attention to us to keep on hitting it and build up our meter much faster. And as I alluded to earlier, a surefire way to make sure that your big finisher attack lands is to use either the crossbow or the harpoon right as you start up this combo. Of course on a training dummy this doesn't work, but I guarantee you that the crossbow and the harpoon's first hit are always going to flinch the kimono, so you can use that time to get right into the kimono's face and start up the animation. By the time the harpoon or the crossbow connects, you'll be on your way to your second hit, which will more often than not also stagger the kimono if not break a monster part, which will lead to your third and final hit landing and dealing a ton of damage. So these are the tactics that I use to make sure that I always land my big finishing move with the Karakuri staff. Again, this big move will always one-shot or two-shot any kimono in the game besides maybe the final boss, unless they are volatile kimono at which point they are health sponges, but you are still able to hunt them very quickly. So this is my build for the Karakuri staff, let me know how you guys feel about it and would you guys like to see some other builds from me, maybe using different weapons. I've been using the Wakasa Blade and the Katana quite a lot, so there's a good chance that I make videos on those weapons as well. With that being said, my name is Dark Hero, thank you all so much for watching and as always, happy hunting.